Welcome today to the Independence 76 Fire Camp, a historical preservation society here in Independence, Missouri. In 1993, I was just seven years old and helped celebrate the 150th anniversary of the fire department. Now, as a firefighter and member of the department, I'm helping celebrate the 175th anniversary. I'm proud that I was part of it, even though it was a short time out of 175 years. I uh, got hired in uh, 1971, November. I really applied for the police department. It was a, a complete fluke that I joined the fire service. And they didn't have any openings, so he said, go down and talk to Tom Pollard, which was the fire chief. I've been around the fire station since 1959 when my dad was hired on. Uh, I'd been out of uh, Vietnam a couple of years and was looking for a job. It was a, it was a difficult transition. And straight out of college in an all-women's college, going into an all-male profession. Actually, I started in the fire service in 1965 with the Air Force. It was a, a challenge to, um, to come out of college, you know, not knowing exactly which way I wanted to go. He hired me right away. He said, go to work today? And I said, yeah. He said, well, we got to get you a long sleeve shirt because you got to slide the pole. Well, I hired on in 1978. I had worked in factories and I'd gone to college and then dropped out of college and I knew I didn't want to work indoors all the time. A friend of mine suggested that I apply at the fire department and it was the best advice I'd ever had. All the trucks they had when I hired on were open cab. The firefighter rode on the tailboard. You grabbed that bar and you stood back there and you got dressed while you were going down the street. It was just a whole altogether different everything. I was a tailboard man because I rode the tailboard. Uh, actually rode on the back of the fire truck, no straps, no nothing. You hung on with your bare hands. I think back in the 60s and the 70s, the, uh, it just wasn't a big priority to have a modern fire department. It was just too expensive. They went from a switchboard where you plug wires into a hole like you see in the old black and white movies. Mm -hmm. That's what we had for a dispatch system. First coming uh, into service, uh, we didn't have any real safety protection. We had our turnout gear. Uh, we didn't have uh, the air packs uh, like we have now. A lot of times you, the adrenaline's so high that you just don't feel the thing you should. I would cut my hands up and, on steel siding and stuff like that and didn't even know it. I'm an adrenaline junkie, like most people that join the fire service. So the first time I got to actually run into a burning building was incredible. Nope, you just grabbed, grabbed the inch and a half hose and you drug it inside and you held your breath and when you came out and you just blew black stuff out your nose and coughed it up for two or three days and that's just the way it was. It was just, um, you know, being able to, to take all that training and put it to use and have, have immediate gratification, of, well not exactly immediate, but pretty close to immediate gratification of putting the fire out was an amazing thing. When I came on, they were just basically starting to use the air pack system when we fought fires. They leaked air. Half the guys wouldn't wear them, including myself, hardly ever. It just toughed it on a house fire. Well, when I first started, we just had a canister that you put, put on. And you weren't very effective because you couldn't stay inside and hunting for fire for very long. And then we got, you know, face pieces that you could breathe out, but you actually sucked the air out. And the rest of your training you got, they'd stick you on a pumper truck and whoever your captain and driver were, they'd just follow me and do what I do. And that was the training that you got. And back then, the equipment I wore weighed more than I did. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the steel tanks and the, the heavy, you know, plastic rubber boots and the, no Gore-Tex, nothing like that. All the trucks were standard transmission, four-speed transmission, and had steering wheel, didn't have power steering. So you had to hoss. Those firemen are out there, two and three o'clock in the morning sometimes. They come back to the station, they've done their job, and somebody in that city is much better off for them doing their job. You often hear that firefighting is more than just a job or a career, it's a calling. A part of that is a bond that you forge with your crew members. You become more than just co-workers, you become family. Throughout our history, those bonds have endured time. 
I think the fire service made me realize how short and how quick things happen. And so every day becomes a treasure. It was a good job. I enjoyed it for 30 years. When I left, and I left in 2003, there's still parts of the job that I miss. I know there was, the thing I'm more, more proud of anything is, is the fact that the, the people that I fought fires with and that I worked with were all good men. A camaraderie amongst men doing a good job and working as a team together. We all worked as a, as a group. Spent a lot of time at different stations throughout my career. Best times I ever had was at station three with this guy. And others. And others. We knew what we were doing. They took care of each other. I remember lots of times when I was a rookie, uh, and I was 26 years old, and they, my captain would grab me, whoa, whoa, slow down, we're gonna, this will be all right, no, we'll get it done. It, but it was a lot of fun. I had more fun back then than I ever did as a chief. But one thing I, I believe with my whole heart is the men and women of the Independence Fire Department are incredible. One night um, we ran a, a house fire and there were um, three people still in the house. I knew the house, so I knew the people that lived there. And um, we went in and uh, some went to the, the parents' room, some you know, found the father and I brought the young man out. He was 15 years old, a, a friend of um, my uh, cousin's. And um, we tried to resuscitate him and we're were unable to. Um, it was very, very difficult. Um, you know, we, we took them all, all the way to the hospital and I was just devastated. It, it, and I knew, I, I really believed I was going to have to go through it on my own. And when I came out of that ER after they pronounced him dead, my crew, who up until then had not, you know, really welcomed me, just gathered around outside that that ER door and they, we put our arms around each other and for just a minute, you know, it was that camaraderie that the fire service is. It's always good that you can look back and see what kind of progress you've made from point A to point B. You look back at history and you learn from any mistakes that were made and, and so you're always trying to improve on what has gone before you and, and at the same time, you know, remember the legacy that guys that have come before you have left, and so and that's always important. Um, fire service is still changing. We're still looking for diversity. We're still trying to find our way through um, being representative of the, of the population in general in our community so that when we come into their homes or when we're taking care of their family, they recognize us as, as part of their community. I'm proud of my, the tradition we created here in Independence. We're a very good fire department, always have been one of the longest tenure fire departments in the state, so. I mean, Independence is a uh, historical fire department. You know, I'm just one piece of that history, an incredible piece of history, because when I started in the fire service, there were only a couple dozen women. When I became fire chief, there was only a couple of dozen women fire chiefs. So the fact that Independence with that rich history would have this other component of it within my tenure I mean, that's, that's really cool. The one constant in the fire department is change, whether that's the tactics or technologies we use. However, one thing that will stay the same will be the bonds and the histories that we create. That is lasting. Music